Good afternoon. This is RCB News, and I am your host, Ryan Bowling. Continuing our discussion of the real history of slavery, this will be entitled The Real History of Slavery Part 2. And I'm going to introduce another book that I purchased about a year or so ago. All of you, more than I know you all know this young lady, and some of you already probably already have, your, have her book, The Great Candace Owens, and her book, Blackout. Okay, she wrote this back in uh, 2020. And uh, I had the opportunity of reading this. I think it's her first novel. And I had the opportunity of reading this book. And uh, very well done. Uh, very well researched. Very well s cited. All of her uh, citations are back here. The book. So if you want to find out where she got all the information from, you can look in the back and find out her, her points of fact. Okay, this is not something she's making up. She backs up her assertions, her assertions with factual data. Just like the last two people I talked about, Thomas Sowell and Walter E. Williams, they all back up their assertions and their arguments with facts and data. The, the left say they do it, but in my opinion, I don't see it really done properly. It's mostly based on emotion, in my opinion. But the, these books that I've just introduced you, they back up their, their factual data, with, their, their assertions rather, with facts. And I wanted to read several paragraphs, as I usually do, from this book dealing with slavery and how that America is oftentimes dogged out by the liberals and, and all the other countries are sanctified, if you will, and America is the most evil country that ever existed. Now, let me say this before I read these, these, these paragraphs. This in, in, in no way am I accusing other ethnic groups and countries of being the most evil country that ever existed and that, that America is totally without fault. I'm not accusing, I'm not making that accusation. I'm just trying to point out the other side because what is being spun right now is this idea, as I said in my previous videos, that America is the most evil, racist country and we'll never get past this racism and we'll never get past the evils of America. But when you have a balanced view and find out that other countries are also enslaving their people and other countries are also committing unspeakable acts of bloodshed and evil against their people as well as other people, then you, when you have that balanced view, then you won't see America as the worst country that ever existed. That's a lie coming from the liberal left, plain and simple. And I want to say that, and so I'm going to read several paragraphs from her book. And this title is in chat, is, is entitled simply, uh, let me see, make sure I get the, 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 the uh, title of the chapter correct here. But it's simply entitled On Slavery, because she begins each of her chapters off with the phrase on on conservatism, on family, on feminism, on over civilization, on socialism and government handouts. But the final chapter is on slavery. And this is what she says, and this is towards the end of the, of, of the chapter on page 245. She says, Kaepernick's tweets eternally convict America. We all know Colin Kaepernick or whatever it is. You know, I don't even want to get into how aggravated he made me, but that's just a whole nother story. He portrays the United States as a fundamentally immoral country, which would never be absolved of its early sins. This is obviously, these are her words. These are Candace Owens words, obviously. This is a very sentiment perpetrated by many leftists and liberals who deem its mission critical to right those wrongs. But their sentiments are entirely rubbish because slavery did not begin with a co colonial white European men in America. And I said that in my, and when I read from the paragraphs from uh, Thomas Sowell's book, Black, Red, Black Rednecks and White Liberals, that it did not, slavery did not originate with white people. It did not originate with America. Rather, it goes, she goes on to say, rather it existed everywhere in the world since the dawn of humanity. Therefore, and as a point of ideal, ideological Consistency regarding the purported immoral, immoral shame of the practice, Kaepernick should not have been celebrated with celebrating with Native Americans. Now, this is interesting. What she says, she says, because they too once practiced slavery, 
Ooh, now that's, that's offensive to some people, but just hold on for a moment here. Because what the left always trying to say, the Americans went there and, 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 and killed up all those Indians and took their land. And just, you know, but, let, but I'm going to read this and let me, hopefully it'll get you to thinking a little bit outside the box. If you, you know, if you haven't been, hopefully this will get you to thinking a little bit outside the box. And then you can purchase this book on your own through time to read all of it. But she says, Yes, it's an inconvenient truth, but ind indigenous tribes were not sitting around kumbaya over a fireplace as leftists would have us believe. Rather, they were attempting to Im imperialize one another. And that, you know, let's make a real quick, quick comment here. You know, this idea of American imperialism, where America, you know, is trying to take over other countries and so forth, and they go on and spreading their, their, their belief systems in other countries, hence the term American imperialism. But every country was trying to, to spread their ideology and belief systems all over the world. The difference is, is that America had better technology. That's it. So they had the upper hand, they had better technology. Is that their fault that they had better technology? Of course not. <laughs> but every country, and every ethnic group and every nationality were imperialists. You name it, they were. They just weren't able to do as much as America because they simply didn't have the technology to do so. America took the technology that they learned and they ran with it. They advanced on it. They didn't just sit on it and act like they, well, I got this technology, I'm good. No, I'm good. No, they, they advanced on it. They developed it where everybody else sat on their, on their morals and didn't do anything with it. But that's another story and I digress. I'm going to read the, the rest of what she says. She says, Rather, they were attempting to imperialize one another. They would enslave their war captives into labor and in many instances would utilize torture as a part of their religious right. And it gets worse. Before Europeans ever landed in the Americas, Native Americans routinely cannibalized one another. Most notorious among them perhaps were the Aztecs. And we all know that. When the Spanish colonists arrived in Mexico City, they were greeted by arranged piles of, get this, of more than 100,000 skulls belonging to human beings who had been sacrificed to the gods. <laughs> really? Now, mention that to a, a liberal or a liberal uh, politician or a liberal university professor, and they'll block this out. In one archaeological expedition, they discovered the remains of 42 children, all around the age of five, who were sacrificed to the rain god, 42 children. Special ceremonies required more sacrifice. On the, inaugur the inauguration of the Aztec's temple, they sacrificed between 20,000 and 60,000 human beings. Incredible. Relying upon the research of Mexican-American Harvard historian David Casario, author Rodney Stark recounted the Aztec ceremonial practices in his book, How the West Won. And these were his words. The ceremonies were performed in front of large crowds. An adult male victim usually was held down on a sacrificial stone atop a pyramid. His chest was slashed open and the priest snatched his still beating heart and held it aloft to the sun. And before I read the rest of this, I'm pretty sure some of you have already seen or have heard of the movie that Mel Gibson made some years ago called Apocalypto. Obviously, clearly that movie was about the Aztecs and what they did. But you don't hear that much. You don't hear people talk about that that much because the attention is taken off of America and put on somebody else. But see, liberals want to demonize America. And that's a whole other story in itself. And I might get into that in a future video on why perhaps liberals and the far left want to demonize America. But that may be in another video in the future. But I digress. Let me, let me continue on. The head of the victim was usually severed and placed on a rack, soon to be a skull added to the ceremonial collection. Then the remaining body was rolled, flailing down the temple steps to the bottom where it was skinned and dismembered. The choice cuts were distributed to onlookers who took them home and ate them. Pure cannibalism, pure cannibalism. Now this doesn't mean that that, that, that whites didn't cannibalize each other in, 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 in European areas. I mean, I'm pretty sure there probably have, may have been some of that. But once again, we go back to this demonizing the West and demonizing America, and America in particular. You can't focus on one and exclude the others. 
You have to be fair. So this is what this historian says. And I'm going to read the rest of what um, Candace Owen says here, and I'm going to end it here. Despite the fact that early colonists wrote extensively about the savage culture of Native Americans, their writings were eventually dismissed in the name of political correctness. The preferred narrative was that white European men needed to savagely portray the indigenous people to justify their own genocidal pursuits. It was even assumed that the Native Americans themselves had lied or rather had been, quote, in italics, misunderstood in their own recorded sacred texts regarding their practices. And that's all I'm going to read right there from this book, Candace Owens Blackout. You can get that on your own free time. Read the rest of this information. As I said earlier, it's well researched, well documented. But the point simply is this. You quit with the demonizing. These liberals have to quit with the demonizing of America. Quit with the demonizing of America. America is not perfect, but let's be real. Let's be real. Of all the countries in the world, and I said this in the previous video, why are other people from other countries coming over here in the thousands? Look at those people in Afghanistan trying to get on the plane. What are they trying to get on the plane for? To escape where? Here. Not Russia, not China, not New Mexico, but here. Now, why do you think it's that? Why do you think it is? Come on, man, let's be realistic about this. Let's be realistic. It's not a perfect country, but it's far superior than all the other countries. Not because it's not because necessarily because of the people. There's a lot of evil to go on in America. True that racism exists, you know, bigotry still exists, all the evil things and bad things still exist because every human being has a dark heart. We're born with a dark heart. Okay? So every human being in every ethnic group and every nationality is capable of doing some of the most unspeakable acts of evil to exist in all of humanity. Okay? But when you just take one particular nationality and you pour all the negativity that in your mind and in your, in your history or whatever onto that country, people are not going to think about all the evils of the other countries. They're going to, they're going to block all of that out. And they're going to have a boxed-in mindset of the darkness of the human heart in every human being. But the, the short passage that I just read out of this book gives you a little bit of information about how, how evil some of these people were, or the acts of evil, rather, that they committed. And this cannibalism, you can call it what you want. Somebody might argue, well, that cannibalism was for religious reasons. Man, come on. You can say it was for religious reasons all day. Evil is evil. Evil is evil. You don't cut somebody's heart out and roll their body down and, down and eat their beating heart and then roll their body down a hill for somebody else to eat talking about something. That was for religious reasons. Really? So if somebody in this country right now, whether they be an Indian or whatever, decides to want to practice that kind of butchery in America, would you be okay with it? Would you say, well, it's just a part of their religion? I don't think so because our laws here don't condone that. We don't accept that, all right? And it's based on the constitution of our country. So, you know, if you all, so if you all like this video, just press the like button, make your comments, subscribe and share this video. Once again, this is RCB News and I'm your host, Ryan Bowling. Once again, get this book, read it. It's a great book. It'll be a blessing to you. God bless you and have a nice day. See you again on RCB News.